It's no secret that the nations around the world are looking into improving the firepower of their main battle tanks. Germans want to move from their 120mm gun to the new 130mm gun and have already ideas on how to upgun their Leopard 2s, and have even made such upgrades on a Challenger tank. The French have also proposed the 140mm gun, and the Russians have had ideas to upgun their Armata tank with a 152mm gun basically from the tank's introduction. But what about other Russian tanks? The tanks that are still armed with the 125mm guns? Well, there have been attempts to upgun the tanks with 152mm gun, and those attempts have shown that it is very much possible. In this video, we will take a look at the Object 292, a tank prototype that could shape the future. But before we start, let me tell you about today's epic sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends, that just happens to be the greatest mobile game of all time. Raid's got a ton of champions, over 600 now. All of those champions come from unique factions, each with their own history in the world of Teleria. And this month, Raid's bringing the latest addition to its huge boss roster, and it's Raid's biggest, baddest and scariest yet, the Hydra. This thing is the ultimate beast, a super-powered clan boss that's like many bosses rolled into one. It's got multiple different heads and each one has unique mechanics. The whole battle is like a crazy tactical puzzle box, always revealing new challenges even in the middle of a fight. This thing is definitely one of the toughest fights in the game, but it's absolutely worth it, because it can get you some of the best artifacts around. Oh, and if the biggest, baddest boss in the entirety of mobile games isn't enough for you, there's more. Raid's also giving away a super limited edition champion to every player in the game. Some of you may recognize him already. It's esports legend and Navi superstar Simple. Between now and January 28, 2022, Simple's limited edition champ is available for free to both new and old players in Raid. All you have to do is log in for 7 days between now and January 28, and he is yours. If you miss that date, you miss out forever. And he's awesome, so you definitely don't want to wait around. This is the best time to get started in Raid. All the new players who use my link from the description or scan my QR code in the next 30 days will get some free resources and a free mystery champion straight away to kickstart your game. I'm not telling you who it is, but trust me, they are awesome. All this treasure will be waiting you here. Click my link in the description or scan my QR code to download Raid now. Thanks Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. The USSR has been looking into the 152mm guns for the main battle tanks a lot during Cold War, and especially a lot during the 80s. A lot of new prototypes and projects were armed, or were supposed to be armed, with some kind of a 152mm gun. But what about the existing tanks? What about the logistical issues of using two different gun calibers on the main battle tanks? Was it possible to actually just install a 152mm gun on the existing tanks if it was required? Well, that would be answered in the late 80s when a new tank project was started, called Object 292. The tank design used TATU as the basis, since the TATU was the latest and the best tank that Russia, or USSR, had at the time. The new tank was to have a new, welded turret with increased protection and increased size on the back to put extra ammunition and of course, the ability to mount a new 152mm gun. The project was approved and they decided to take an existing TATBV tank as the basis for the actual project, since TATU and TATBV share many parts. It would not be a problem to use an older tank, because if it works on TATBV, it will surely work on TATU. In 1990 the tank was completed. Instead of making a brand new turret for the tests, they modified an existing turret, enlarged the area around the gun so the 152mm gun would fit, mounted weight simulators on the front of the turret to simulate the increased weight of the new welded turret. This was done to see if the electronics would work without issues with the increased weight, and they have done other modifications on the turret, such as adding the rear bustle rack. The tank was powered by the, at the time, new 1250 horsepower gas turbine engine, which was a standard for TATU tanks. The main gun was the 152.4mm LP83 gun. The gun was able to sustain the 7000 kg per square centimeter of pressure, or around 99,500 psi. In comparison, the 120mm M256 of the Abrams tank could sustain around 74,000 psi. 
This is noticeably higher, but warranted. The projectiles the gun was supposed to fire were very powerful. It's said that the impulse produced by the projectiles was more than one and a half times higher than that of the 125mm guns. The tank received a new outloader. Some have said that it has a bustle outloader, like the French Leclerc, but I honestly doubt that. The rear turret bustle appears to be very small. Too small to accommodate the entire loading mechanism. Such things have been tried by Ukrainians on the T-84 Yata gun, and the difference is clearly visible. And on the tank's diagram we can see that there are shells put around the crew as if they are in a carousel, while in the turret the projectiles are facing away from the crew. That would mean that it would be incredibly hard to make an autoloader, since it would have to rotate the rounds before loading them into the gun, and there is simply not enough space to do so. One thing about the outloader, it seems that the projectiles are placed vertically, unlike the usual T-80 outloader which has the charges placed like that. That means that the risk of the tank catching fire is reduced, since the charges are far more hazardous than the actual projectiles, which can even be just solid APF SDS shots. The firing trials of the fully functional tank were conducted in 1991. The target was a decommissioned T-72 tank. It is said that the turret had several breaks, or cracks, I don't know the correct translation, and that the instruments literally jumped out of their mounts from the sheer force of the impact of projectiles. From this we can easily conclude that sometimes it wouldn't even be necessary to penetrate an enemy tank. It would be possible that the impacted tank would be knocked out without the projectile actually making it through the armor. With the successful firing trials, it was concluded that the tank was more than capable of carrying and firing the more powerful gun. The recoil was recorded to be no different than that of the 125mm gun, which is honestly amazing, and no problems with the tank were recorded. The project was practically a success. So what happened then? Well, the USSR collapsed, and Russia saw great reduction in military spending. The project was ultimately cancelled due to funding being removed, and no further testing was able to be completed. Many who worked on the project were devastated with the decision since the project was extremely promising. The tank was in 2007 put in the Kubinka Museum and remains there fully operational to this day. Now, even though it is cancelled, it did show one important thing. Russian tanks are more than capable of firing the more powerful 152mm guns. So if they ever do follow up on the plan to make Armata with the 152mm gun, it would also be possible to upgun the other tanks with such guns as well. And that would be all for now, hope you enjoyed. If you like my content you can consider supporting me on Patreon, or leave a like or subscribe to the channel if you are new, that also helps a lot. Thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next video, have a nice day.